Happy Tuesday, everyone, or happy whatever day of the week that you're listening to this, but today is Tuesday, March 8th, and I don't usually do like a little intro before my episodes, but you know what? Today we have some things that we need to commemorate. So number one, it is International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day to everyone out there that listens to my podcast, all of my girls out there. I'm so thankful to have such a huge community of such empowering and supportive girls, um, especially my Facebook group, which is another thing. We hit 20,000 freaking members. Absolutely insane. I had all of the girls in my group uh, post on a thread with photos of them meeting up with people from the group. So I'm going to post like a really nice montage of everyone that we've been able to bring together throughout the past three months of me starting the group. So 20,000 members, that's a huge accomplishment. I'm so, so excited to continue to see our community grow. If you're not in it yet, go and join it. It's awesome. There's girls in so many different cities across literally the world. There's people from abroad too. It's insane. So go check it out. It's on Facebook. Just type in Fun on Weekdays podcast. Um, Second thing, you guys, drum roll, because today is the day that it's finally freaking here. I know it's been a long time coming, but the merch, the merch is here. So funonweekdays.com. There's a password on the site right now, depending on what time you're looking at this or what time you're listening to this episode, but everything is going to be on my website. So I have the hats, the trucker hats. I have the sweatshirts and I have the stickers. So this was just kind of like a small little batch run. We're going to see how it goes. And Hopefully, um, hopefully it'll go great. My fingers are crossed. I'm like so giddy for today just to see how it goes. And then maybe in the future I'll do more. So let's see. It'll open at 5 p.m. Central and set an alarm on your phone because I have a feeling that hopefully it'll sell out. I don't have that that many. So yes, today's like a huge day for me. Um, last thing. This episode that you're about to listen to is just so exciting and fun for me because to sit down and talk to like actual business owners who are doing something that I always thought that I would be doing after going to school for fashion, I think is just really cool. So today's episode is with the founders of Daily Drills, Kennedy and Mary Ralph. They are absolute lifetime besties. They met in college, actually through Instagram, and they started a business called Daily Drills, and they're now doing amazing. I wear their clothes. I've seen so many celebrities wear their clothes. Super cute. And they also wanted me to share that they have their own discount for y'all. So sweet. We love a good discount. So Jenna15 will get you 15% off of their entire site, and that's going to be live until May 1st. You can only use it one time per customer, so use it wisely, stack up on anything you want. Um, I have these pair of orange shorts that I love. I also have this light blue kind of jogger and sweatshirt set, super cute. So again, that's Jenna15, and it'll get you 15% off. This episode is all about friendship, how they've navigated it over the years, especially going into serious relationships and just life after college while also starting a business and all of the challenges that comes with that. Truly felt like I was talking to my best friends and older sisters, getting advice from them, and I know that y'all are going to love this episode, so let's get into it. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys feeling? So, so good. good. We're so excited yes. to be chatting with you. Good. Me too. I was looking forward to it this week. Um, when I got an email asking if I would be interested to have you all on, I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I literally thought about having you all on. And then the same day I get the email from y'all's like agency. And I was like, such a perfect opportunity. So for ev- <laughs> yes, everyone joining the podcast today. Welcome back. Fun on weekdays. Today I am with the lovely iconic founders of Daily Drills. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'm Kennedy Critchlow. And I'm Mary Ralph Lawson. And we're best friends and founders of Daily Drills, which is an athleisure line based in Los Angeles. So exciting. I have so many girls that follow me um, that have like small businesses. Maybe they have a boutique or like they want to start one. And I think it's honestly just amazing to have y'all on and kind of give your insight, but also offer such a unique perspective because you are best friends. And, you know, obviously that's like everyone's dream job is to start a successful business with their best friend. But of course that comes with a lot of obstacles and challenges. And today I kind of want to like deep dive right into it. And just the realities of all the hard work that y'all do and kind of how it's 
shaped your friendship and just changed over the past years. So kind of like the first question is, where are you all from? How did you meet? How did you become besties? Okay, well, I'm from Austin, so I'm super jealous that you're in Austin, Texas right now. Um, And I moved to LA to go to Pepperdine um, my freshman year of college. And then Ken's from Washington. She moved to LA. She went to LMU, which is a college um, just right down the street from Pepperdine. And we became friends. Actually, we started an Instagram account together. We thought it was very cutting edge at the time. Um, It was like a collaborative five girl influencer fashion account called Bits of Bliss. So if you're an OG listening, you probably remember. Back in 2014, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my goodness. But we had never met in person. So then when we both moved out to LA, we quickly met and became fast friends sort of towards the end of college. Um, Our friend groups really overlapped. And then we always circulated business ideas and Ken was uh, working for another company and she started her own company and I started my own company and we were both doing similar things in similar circles. And then it was kind of Ken's idea. It was like right place, (laughs) right time. We were both working with, uh, free, we were both doing freelance work with a woman who's in production manufacturing business and she had some leftover fabric and she was kind of like, Kennedy, what do I do with it? Any ideas? And I was like, Ralph, let's take it. Oh, so wow. Started, oh my gosh. Yeah. Active wear thinking that we were going to do black leggings, black biker shorts. And quite frankly, that's all we could afford at the time. It's hundred percent self-funded. And, um, quickly we learned that we were much more interested in the fashion space. And so that's kind of where we're sitting right now, that transitional wear space pieces that you can wear to work out, but you can also style up. Amazing. That's so cool too, that you have that kind of background and the manufacturing side. I had some questions about it that we'll get to later that are a little bit more like technical as far as starting the business. But you mentioned that you met through an Instagram thing. What was it like meeting each other for the first time in person? I just, I'm dying to know. Cause sometimes I I literally don't remember it, but my roommate at the time or my roommate now was also one of the five people at the time. Yeah. Oh so my like gosh. Our friend group literally came from this collaborative Insta- Instagram account that we made in high school because all of us like soon moved to LA and it was kind of connected. Yeah. But I don't remember the exact first I remember first when time. we first started becoming good friends, but I don't remember like the initial meet. Yeah. But you were like exactly like you were. The, remember, I remember like kind of the time frame when we met yeah. and you were exactly like you were. We, we had a group text and stuff. So I kind of felt right. like we knew each other. Yeah. And I had met a friend on Instagram before, so I didn't think it was that weird, but it was definitely at the beginning of like Instagram. I remember thinking you were way taller than I thought you were. Really? (laughs) (laughs) Everyone Everyone thinks I'm like five, two. I know. How tall are you? Five, eight. Oh, wow. You got long legs. (laughs) Got some long legs. You have some long legs. (laughs) Tall queen. So (laughs) that was going to be one of my questions was, so there were five of you. What are the other three girls doing? And how did y'all determine that you two were the ones that were like really going to click and start this business together? Um, Well, okay. So the other one was my twin sister and we actually started a business (laughs) together. I know that was perfect, but she lives in Austin. Um, And then another girl lives in New York now. She's super cool. I think she works in fashion. Um, And then the other girl is Coco, my roommate, and she does influencer stuff. So none of them were super interested in like starting a line. I think Ken and I were like the ones that, that was kind of something that we had always talked about. Um, and the other ones kind of had more of their careers like set in another yeah. path. And Bits of Bliss, stopped, we stopped like posting, when would you say? Like 2016? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it didn't did last, last like for a very, year. Yeah, maybe it didn't last for very long. If we would have kept it up, it could have been cool. I, I think, know, but... I kicked myself for yeah. that. It was a <laughs> yeah. good idea. 2014 was like the start of Instagram bloggers, influencers, I feel like, but now it's so normal for people to make friends through the internet and like to meet up and just already kind of instantly click. But I I'm sure back then it was probably like kind of crazy meeting up for the first time, having these, all of these ideas to kind of bounce off of each other. And then, so daily drills was officially started. When did y'all start working on the project? And then when did you officially launch it? That's a great question. So I think I text you mid-summer 2020. July, I would yeah. say, yeah. And we, she said yes, and it was, we didn't look back. We started circulating, you know, names and kind of like casting vision for what we wanted our brand to be. Granted, we didn't think it would get nearly as much momentum as it did. We kind of just wanted to test it and see if anything came from it. And then we had our, our soft launch in November of 2020. Oh, wow. So that's a quick turnaround. So just a few months. Yeah. But again, like we had four, four offerings. It was black leggings, black biker shorts, a white cropped tee and a black sports bra. 
And we literally thought we were going to be workout instructors. We moved all the furniture out of my living room, <laughs> set up a ring light, That's like bad. had weights. And we did a five minute, like quick booty workout. And we were dead after that. And we we're like, okay, we like fashion. We don't love working out. Like there, it's going to have to transition at some yeah. point. So we always knew daily drills wasn't just going to be leggings and biker shorts. Right. It was obviously good basics to begin with. And the yeah. fabric that we had on hand during COVID, because obviously you couldn't get much, um, sure. but we knew like, yeah. one day, but by one day we maybe thought in like five years, we would get like loungewear, um, maybe other categories, but it happened quicker than we thought, which has been yeah. amazing. So now we're very much more fashion focused, not as much workout focused. Thank God. Yeah, definitely. And I have to say I'm wearing my, uh, like the light blue joggers. Oh, I don't know so if you can cute. see I wear them literally every day. And I also have a pair of like the orange sweat shorts. The, those are my two favorite like loungewear Aww. items right now. I'm not kidding. Like Connor can attest. I wear them every single day. <laughs> it's like, I should probably wash them more often than I wear them. Um, but I am a we huge, won't tell. <laughs> I'm a huge, huge fan. And I just think what y'all are doing is so incredible. And like so many people look up to how you've been able to turn your friendship into a business and so much of you guys goes into it. So obviously because like your friendship is a huge foundation of all of this, I would love to know how has your friendship evolved over, you know, the time of starting daily drills? <laughs> I'm trying to, I know I, you, you hear me pause. It's a good pause because I feel like our friendship has grown so much stronger through owning yeah. a business together. And it's so funny. People ask me this all the time. Like, you know, how do you separate it? Like, do you still feel like you're just as good of, as friends as you were when you started? And I'm like, I feel like we're better friends. We, we just had like a pop-up last week at our office and we, we left the office like 1230. We're like at lunch by one and like shut off. Like, yes, we'll talk about business here or there, but it's like only the fun stuff. And I feel like we're really good at compartmentalizing it. Both Ralph and I aren't super emotional people by nature. So I feel like we're kind of just like cut and dry. If something's bothering us or obviously we're like compassionate, but we're not like going to sit in our, and like sit in our feelings about it, you know? So I kind of feel like even if there is like any points of tension, like we're, we're really quick to bounce back from it, but I definitely think it's like grown deeper and just like more transparency, more hard conversations, but also like more fun, more play. We also know so much more about each other now, yeah. like working with someone every single day. I have a twin sister. So I like kind of grew up with someone knowing everything about me and being around someone my age all the time. So I feel, and she has a sister that's one year younger, two, oops, yeah. two years younger. So we kind of always have had like girls our age, you know, around, um, which has helped, I think having sisters because we get the dynamic. Yeah. Um, but I've just, we've just learned a lot more about each other. And I think at the beginning, we obviously were friends. So we knew a lot, but we work like very differently and have very different strengths that complement each other. I think if we like both love the exact same things, we might butt heads a little bit more, yeah. but there's things like definitely is Ken's lane. And I lean on her for that and things that are definitely my lane and she leans on me for them. Yeah. So I feel like having different strengths really helps because if we had, if we loved doing the exact yeah. same thing all the time, it might get like too much. Or overlap. if we felt like extremely passionate about the same things. Yeah. Like a lot of things that Ralph will feel super passionate about. I'm like, I don't care. I'm not going to notice the difference. <laughs> yeah. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. You it's know, so true. It's so <laughs> ironic. It really nice. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just cut you off. What was the last part? No, no. I just said that makes it really nice on us. Oh, it's so ironic that you bring up the fact that you all have like different strengths and not necessarily weaknesses, but things that you're both differently passionate about because that was literally my next question was kind of like how do y'all balance each other in terms of your personalities or like your strengths and your skills in terms of like your social personalities in with your friendship but then also your your strengths and skills for a business we always say if there was like an only a kin that there would be only leggings black leggings forever and if there was only me there'd be a million ideas but like no name and LLC and all of that sort of stuff. So we're very like different minded. We obviously love the same things. So that's why we're best friends. Like we have, we love fashion. We love living in LA. We have a lar our larger community is similar, Yeah, but I think like we do really balance each other out. We made a um, sheet one time of like things you love to do and things that drain you. And ours were actually the exact opposite and flip oh, wow, <laughs> which was crazy. Like we had so never done nice. that before. Cause you don't do that with your friends. You're not like, yeah, oh, let's sit down like on our happy hour and talk about right, that. But, right. Like, 
And then I was like, oh my God, I never really noticed that we're that different in like business and work. And so that really has yeah, helped. Yeah, agreed. Me. Also, even just like socially, we're both super outgoing. I mean, we could literally talk till the sun comes up and yeah. not run out of things to talk about, which is so nice. But Ralph is like definitely more extroverted. Like can be, you can go from one thing to the next and, and so on, like your whole day and not be drained. And I'm like a little bit more of like a homebody. Like I like to sit at the office behind my computer. She wants to be like out mingling, making Kid brings her lunch and I go get my lunch. I feel like <laughs> that's the definition. That is, that is a good example. But it was funny. We, so we had this like little pop-up cafe last week and it was mostly all of our friends and then some select influencers. And I was like literally sitting behind, like processing all the orders. And Ralph's like up there like, oh my gosh, what can I get you? Do you want a coffee? And I'm like, this is this is why we're business partners. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Like I'd right. love to like catch up with a friend, but like I'm a one-on-one person. I don't like big group settings. Like I'll do it, but I don't love it. And Ralph like thrives. So I'm like, thank God that I don't have to like turn it on for six hours. Um, and my worst fear would be sitting on the computer behind when yeah. all my friends are outside, like doing the <laughs> orders, you know? Yeah. So it's perfect. All right, y'all, we are already almost halfway into March, which is absolutely crazy because that means it is almost spring break time, my favorite time of the year. I am going to Hilton Head for the first time in a few years next weekend. I think next weekend, yeah. So I'm trying to get all of my beach clothes ready and wherever you're heading this spring break, Macy's has you covered from sunscreen to sandals, bathing suits, cover-ups, beach bags, literally anything and everything you need. Maybe even some games if you wanna take them to the beach. Macy's has everything. I'm super excited to get some time with my family, spend some time in the sun. I'm going for a wedding, which also, if you have some spring weddings coming up, Macy's has you covered with the perfect wedding guest dresses as well. Head over to macy's.com, you can find everything you need, and macy's.com forward slash F-O-W has all of my favorites. So it sounds like y'all balance each other like perfectly and you two are kind of like two peas in a pod. One is super outgoing, super extroverted. Other is also, but like you like to do the more kind of behind the scenes type things. Um, So with that, even though it sounds like y'all are probably like such a good balance, have y'all ever had any like fights or arguments in terms of like the business and how has that kind of affected your, your like friendship if you have it all? I don't think we've ever had like a fight. Yeah, we've never had a fight <laughs> <laughs> or an argument. We definitely have had hard conversations. Like, yeah, I think it, I I would be concerned if we didn't right. honestly have hard conversations just in terms of like work preferences, work styles. Um, also, it, it's better now because we actually have a full time hire and we're we're continuing to grow our team. So I feel like the more people we have in office, the less it's like me versus Ralph. It's like it's diversified among a whole team Mm -hmm. so that has helped I feel like a lot yeah in terms of like that's really helped and then also when it was when we so at the beginning we self-fulfilled out of my apartment for six months and like it was really really hard work and heavy lifting like there was a I remember there was a pallet that was dropped off like in the middle of Montana in LA which is like a busy street right in front of my house and then we obviously didn't have a freight elevator. So we, Ken and I had to lift all of the boxes up ourselves, like huge boxes from a pallet. And so when that kind of was happening and when it was in my house all the time, and yeah. it was like really intertwined in our lives, I felt like we, we never had a fight and it was the beginning. So it was like super, super fun and yeah. exciting and very new. Um, but I think that we've really put things in place to make sure that doesn't happen. Like we got an office space so that we can go and we can leave and we can, you know, leave the work where it's supposed to stay, which is at the office. We hired someone who, you know, is kind of in between us. So it's obviously not Ken versus Ralph. It's more of like what's best for daily drills. What's best for daily drills. And I feel like having that focus makes it less personal. Like Mm -hmm. if, if Ralph has a problem or if I have an issue, we can be like, Hey, like here's a standard for daily drills. We can both agree on that. And then what's, what is it happening to meet that standard? And what do we need to do to like fix that versus like, I feel like you're not doing X, Y, and Z. I feel like we both have learned to carry ourselves very professionally and kind of like, if I were working for somebody else or with somebody else who isn't a close friend, like you think about two guys having a conversation, you know what I mean? Like, I think people, we were just talking about this on someone else's podcast, like, you know, how can girls be best friends and also business partners? But like if two guys who are friends start a business, you're not going to sit there and be like, 
don't you guys fight all the time? Like, yes. isn't your friendship <laughs> ruined? And it's like, no, we just talk about what needs to be talked about and move on. Yeah. So right. True. I, I think people have that understanding that like girls are a lot more sensitive and maybe a little bit more catty. And so if y'all ever did have maybe like a, a difference of opinions, people might assume that it would like cause a right. fight where, you know, Connor and Mike have their business. And I don't know yeah. if they've ever been asked like that question. Right. Um, but I am curious, like, how do y'all kind of the way that y'all talk to each other in terms of like, uh, daily drills and more business and more like professional, how do y'all come to each other with differing opinions? Hmm. I feel like we just say them honestly, like we obviously have differing opinions daily. And then, um, one thing that sounds really dumb that we did was we did like a care scale. So I'll be like, Oh, I really like this. And Ken says, Oh, I really like this. And they're very different. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, I care a 10 about this. Like the buttons on the shirt are like going to drive me crazy at night. That's what I'm thinking about every day. And Ken's like, okay, I care about it too. So we're just going to go with your opinion. I think that really helps because sometimes you're like at the end of the day, you're making a hard decision and you're tired and you've had challenges throughout the day so then you're just kind of like oh I just want it to go my way because I just want it to go my way and I'm in this sort of a mood so when you like strip it back to like we're gonna make hard decisions in the morning or like first thing not when we're tired and drained at the end of the day and already frustrated or on edge or need to eat and hangry yeah um I feel like that really helps and then the care scale like helps us just to know like exactly where each other are right and like any sort of um, disagreement is never usually about the specific thing. It's like always deeper. That's what I found. It's like, if I leave the office and I'm like, oh, I just didn't feel great about that conversation. I'll go home and process and be like, oh, it's because I was anxious and actually had nothing to do with that decision. It was something else underlying that like I need to sort out. Yeah. So I feel like that's been helpful too. Just like giving ourselves time and space to, to like process decision-making, come back to it the next day. And I think too, like whenever we have conversations, I feel like we're both really good at being like, we care about the other person before we care about the business. Like I would rather my friendship than this business at the end of the day. Like that's how important my friendship with Ralph is. And so I feel like when we address things, it's like, I want you to be like happy and healthy as a, as a person foremost, first and foremost. So what do we need to do so that you are happy and healthy, that I'm happy and healthy. And then together, as business partners, we're thriving and creating a culture and a community that is happy and healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really great. I think also too, just business aside, that's really good advice is whenever you are having those moments where you're overwhelmed and like, you're just kind of annoyed or pissed off by your friend. And you're like, I want it to go my way. And maybe you're arguing or something. I always try not to like reach out to the friend and express that right away. I try to just take time to myself, think it over. Don't say anything rash that like, might potentially hurt the other person and just like really take time and think about how you want to portray your feelings. Because like you said, oftentimes a lot of it is so much deeper than one specific action. And it might be rooted in maybe some things that you like let build up over time, or maybe it's something going on in your personal life. So I I do think that's, that's really great advice. Um, in terms of y'all just like as friends, Super, um, super curious to know what are some of your like favorite things to do together? That's not involving daily drills. And especially in LA too. I have a lot of girls that listen that are in LA. We love to go have a glass of wine and yeah. shop. A tipsy <laughs> yeah. shop is an ideal shop. on a Friday a afternoon. Nice, a nice meal, a glass of white and some good old fashioned shopping. <laughs> That's like our favorite on Fridays. We like let ourselves do that probably once a month. Yeah. And it's fun. I feel like we both love to travel too. We travel a lot for work and for our um, collection drops, but we'll always like tack on a trip with her husband and my boyfriend before, or yeah. we'll last time we were in Paris in February and we've always wanted to go to the Soho farmhouse outside of London. And we're like, why don't we just do that us two and have fun and like hang out while we're, we're going to be over there anyway. Like how we would do a girl's trip. If we didn't have daily drills, we would plan a girl's trip there. Um, so just things like that, that we love to do together. Double dating. We double date a lot. Matcha runs midday beach on the weekend. She's always at the beach. So I'm like, I'll come for a couple hours, but But like we can turn it off quick. Like if we're going to air one to get lunch or matcha at Alfred, we really do turn it off quick. Like, Oh, and then this, 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 like chat, just like we're friends. And then we get back to the office. It's just nice having like a place, like an office. Cause when we walk in the door, we're at work within literally when we shut the door and walk two feet to our car, we like change. The physical separation is everything. A game changer. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. I will say, I think that is a really huge thing that a lot of people struggle with is 
not having the separation if you're working from home because it's so freaking hard. I worked mm-hmm. from home for a for a year when I was working for TikTok and to like lay in your bed, you have no separation. Yeah. And so to have like the physical place that you can go to, I'm sure that's such a good, yeah. you know, barrier for you guys. Yeah. And you mentioned that you're both in relationships. Super curious, you know, as we're all getting older and <laughs> starting <laughs> to settle down, you know, like your friendships change over the years when you get a boyfriend or you get married. And I think that's a lot of, you know, something that a lot of people that listen to my podcast struggle with is kind of like, you have a best friend, they're your go-to person. And then they get in a serious relationship and maybe you don't see them that much, or then maybe they get married and then you maybe see them less. And then maybe they have like kids super curious how you guys have kind of combated that and navigated it. Um, and you know, having your friendship still kind of flourish as well. Can I feel like that's for sure a thing, especially from college, moving to LA, which Malibu was where my college was. So it was only like 20 minutes away. Um, but those friends change depending on season of life. I feel like a lot of the single girls stick together and a lot of the girls are in relationships stick together, but Mm -hmm. we started our friendship from a Bible study. And I feel like, like, that's when we really started to get to know each other. So I feel like if you have something rooting you as friends, besides just like the phase of life you're in, um, that's really helpful. But Ken's married and I have a long-term boyfriend. Yeah. And we got close when you were in a serious relationship. So that's kind of hard for me to give advice on just because I feel like it hasn't changed our friendship. And you've been married, I feel like forever. (laughs) I know. How long have you been married? (laughs) No, um, I've been with Justin for eight years, I think now, seven or eight. So we're in high school. How yeah. cute. Oh and my then, gosh. Yeah. We literally met two weeks before college and <gasps> then we got married. We like officially got married at the courthouse in summer 2020. And then we had our actual proper wedding this last September. Mm-hmm. So okay, kind of crazy, but, but what do you do? Well, how, how, how have you felt? With what that? do I do? Yeah. So it is definitely very interesting. Um, being in a relationship now. And like, I, I guess it's kind of weird too, because really only my listeners that listen to podcasts, like know that I'm dating Connor. I don't really like kind of put it out there that much. Um, but like the things that I do for fun, obviously, you know, change, like I do a lot more wholesome things, but going out to a bar. (laughs) Yeah. I, I mean, like, don't, don't get me wrong. I still love like having a glass of wine and drinking and like going out this past weekend, we went out on Saturday and like, it was a wild, crazy day. And I think just you realize that you can do a lot more other things to hang out with your friends that are a lot more like genuine and wholesome that you feel a lot closer to that friend rather than just go out. Like, for example, this morning I went on a walk with my friend Hallie and she was like working from home today. So we went for like a three and a half mile walk Mm -hmm. and we just talked for like an hour and a half and we didn't drink. We didn't do anything. We just, we just talked. And I've only known her for like, a little over a month, but just the time that I've spent with her has been so intentional. And I feel like when you are in a relationship, just those friendships kind of change because, you know, like you said, you're in a different season of life and your values are a little bit different. And it's very natural for like your single friends to kind of group together. And they're going to want to go and do other things that are maybe a little bit more spontaneous where you don't have to think about this other person that you have in in your life. Whereas now I'm in a relationship and I still do enjoy doing those things. It's just, I have a better appreciation for doing other things that I've kind of opened my eyes to. Yeah. And I love that. I love the fact that you have more like intentional hang time with your friends. Cause sometimes I think it's easier just to go out on the weekends on Saturday night, Friday and Saturday night. But when you have someone that you're kind of coming home to during the weekdays or the weekends, it's like you make time for that walk. You make time for the coffee, yeah. the Pilates class. Yeah, um, and totally. then you're like so excited too when you get like your girls night because you don't have it as much as you used to or all the time. So yeah. I, I, and all, honestly, I've always kind of been that type of person, like even not in relationships. I've been like not a super homebody, but I don't like go out late all the time. So I feel like it's also personality yeah, differences. Totally. Um, and what's interesting too, I was just thinking about this. So Justin and I did long distance for four years in college. And so I feel like I kind of like lived my single life. Yeah. If that makes sense. I had a long distance boyfriend too. I feel like that's key. Yeah, (laughs) I know. So I had a long distance boyfriend too in college and there is a portion where you feel like you're kind of living a double life, you know, where like you have a boyfriend on the weekends when you see him. And then during the week, like you can go to dinner with your girlfriends. 
I mean, granted it's in college. So like you have a lot more free time to be able to do that versus like yeah. maybe you're working a corporate job and you don't have as much of that time, but yeah. it definitely was kind of like, you know, a little Hannah Montana kind of. It's so not, true. Not so that you're true. like single when you're not together, but you know what I mean? You have more yes. independence and flexibility and you're not having to sacrifice as much, um, which is interesting, but I do feel like post-grad, I mean, we're now whatever, Four, so sad. I think it's four years out of college. Um, but I do feel like over time I have seen like my close friends dwindle down. Like I still feel like I have a ton of like acquaintances, people I go for walks with, grab coffee with every couple months, but I have like four, three or four like best friends in LA. And so then I think when I choose intentionally choose who I really want to invest in and be like actively involved in a weekly basis in their lives, I'm able to like go out to the drinks or say yes to the dinner or be mm -hmm. spontaneous with that person because I'm not trying to keep up the same amount of friends I, I did when Justin wasn't here. Yeah. That's, so really, like that's helped too. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point is finding like kind of those key relationships and like honing in on them. I know yes. people view it differently. Like there's people who, who love to have like a ton of real of friends and like, maybe you don't have as many intimate relationships with as many of them or maybe you have like a very small close knit group of friends. Like I have a group of five girl or oh gosh, I don't even know seven girlfriends from high school that we still have a group chat. We still talk, like we mm -hmm. still keep up with each other. And those are the types of friendships that like, I will literally put aside any of my time to, to keep up with those girls, because I know for a fact that they will be my life like forever. Um, yeah. so as we're kind of like getting older and, you know, as you said, you're kind of reassessing that curious, what do y'all look for in a friend? And like any advice for, there's a lot of post-grad girls, you know, it's not easy to make friends after college. Um, it's easy to make acquaintances, but to make friends is difficult. So what are some things that y'all look for or that like y'all bring to each other? It's funny because I feel like each of my best friends in LA are very different. They all bring out different parts of me, whether that's like a little bit more like feelings-based, a little bit more spontaneous, um, a little bit more introspective. So it's really kind of cool. Like all of my friends are, wouldn't you agree? My friends, yeah, your are, friends are very different, very yeah, different which, is fun. which is super fun. So I wouldn't, I don't like have like, this is my like, you know, key friend. Like they don't look and talk the same, but I think for me, like I really need deep friendship. Like I think post-college, like I really realized the importance of depth in a friendship and like intimacy and being vulnerable and transparent and um, I feel like I end up being a, that person for a lot of people that they come and share things with. And I think that makes me feel really close to the person. So someone that I can like really connect with in a, in a deep way. And then someone I can have fun with at the end of the day. Um, loyalty is huge to me. Not like, are you going to pick my set or theirs, but loyalty, right. like, mm -hmm. I know that they would be there for me through and through. I know if somebody like talked poorly about me in a social setting, they would stand up right there, whether they're the super shy friend or the super outgoing friend, mm -hmm. like having that sort of like, I don't know. It's almost my friends almost feel like family to me. Like I, I need my yeah. friends to feel like I could really trust them with pretty much anything and know they would show up for me. Especially because we moved to LA and we don't have a, a lot of family yeah. here, both of us. Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of big. I would say too, like a needy friend is some, a friend that I'm, I don't really have these days I feel like <laughs> I feel like being in a relationship and traveling a lot and starting a new business like there's a lot and I feel like our heads are spinning half the time yeah. and then some friends you know don't understand that phase of life that you're in or think that you should be the way you used to be in college or before college yeah um so just friends that like you pick up where you left off I feel like is yeah. super super important yeah. and of course like the closer you are to someone the easier it is to do that so it's harder with a new friend because you actually have to hang out with them to become right. a friend yeah but I think just the friends that like get you get where you're at kind of assume that you're coming from the best place yeah um is super yeah. important and also I feel like you you're an incredibly generous person like you're always like going the extra mile for your so friends sweet. no but you really <laughs> are and so I feel like but I feel like if I like look at I mean tell me if I'm right or wrong yeah. but I feel like if I like looked at your friends over the years like feel like you've kind of, I don't want to say cut out. That's not the right word, but like not invested in the friends who would take from you and not give anything back. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you were like, wait, like I've poured so much into these friendships and like, would they do that for me? I don't need them to do that for me, but would they do that for me? And mm -hmm. I feel like that's been really 
interesting like you yeah. you creating those boundaries I can get guilt tripped easy because I do like to book a flight and do the thing but like <laughs> I've realized it's not the best for me yeah you know and especially if you have your own business like you well, can't it's hard when friends start to feel unbalanced like when you have more capacity it's like okay I can like encourage you I encourage you I can like I can show you. up for you yeah. like I'll like yes we're gonna celebrate your birthday all weekend but then it's like the, the less time you have, like you need people who are going to do that back for you and fill your cup because you, you don't have the same capacity to have your cup full all the time. Yeah. Or when you can't go to the event or whatever with them, then it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is such a good point is like good friends to me, especially at this like really weird stage of my life where I don't have that much time. A good friend to me is somebody that like gives grace and yeah, understands 100%. like you know what, you're going through stuff. And maybe, maybe I am off one day. Maybe I'm like not the most energetic or maybe I'm not the most welcoming or warm. Like a good friend understands that at the end of the day, you're going through things too. And like, yeah, what I need is like their support and they should also expect that back from me. And I, I really, I like everything that you just said and kind of setting those boundaries and taking those people out and maybe not giving them time because that time that you're investing in the friends that aren't investing in you is taking away from yourself. Um, curious, what are some of like the boundaries or how have you kind of gone about that? Have you ever had like a formal conversation of like, Hey, here's what's going on. This is why I haven't been seeing you this much. I've just decided that my values align elsewhere and I'm not really looking forward to investing into this friendship anymore. Like uh, what's your, <laughs> I wish I could do that. that. Oh my oh God. God. Kim no, is no. so much better at that. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, no, no confrontation. I'm no I could, confrontation. I don't know if I could do that specifically. You know, it's obviously a lot easier to say that than it is to do it. I think yeah. if, if that friend was coming to you and asked like, Hey, you've been super weird. You've been like kind of ghosting me. Like that's an opportunity for you to express it. But for somebody to just straight up say like, Hey, we don't really align that much. Like, I don't really want to be your friend. Like that is a really freaking awkward thing to do. But sometimes so you awkward. have those friends that you're yeah. like, they just, they're not really like a friend and it, it's kind of hard to cut that out. So I'm curious yeah. how you've kind of done that over the years. I haven't really had, I've had confrontational conversations of like, Hey, I'm really disappointed in this or like, um, I've had friends come to me and be disappointed in me, especially through like life changes and different, you know, whatever, um, and like work it out that way. But I haven't had any, like, let's not be friends anymore sort of conversations. I think what I've realized two, a couple of things, a, like, it's okay to say no, where I don't have time right now. Like I'll get people reaching out to me to go for coffee or whatever. And like, in a nice way, I'll just say like, this month is looking so busy. Like, can we pick up the conversation, you know, next month? Mm -hmm. um, obviously in like a super nice way, but like, I want to be able to be present with you. I'm not gonna be able to be present with you because I'm, I'm pretty much like full capacity right now. Um, and just giving yourself permission. Cause before I would be like, that's so rude. I'm not making, I'm, I'm, that makes it seem like my time is more important than theirs. And mm -hmm. it's just like, no, it's just where you're at right now. It's like giving myself grace to say no. Then I also think people who I maybe not I, they may want to be friends or may want to continue pursuing a friendship where they're spending a lot of time with me, but I don't necessarily want that back. Or I'm not, I don't necessarily want to invest in the friendship. I'll invite them to things that I'm doing. So like, I'm going to be at the beach all day today. Like you should come by if you want to come by versus like, Hey, would love to go to dinner with you. You know? So it's, I'm not necessarily inconveniencing myself for it. If they want to come and make an effort, great. But I don't feel like I'm like having to extend any more of myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a really so good. That's a really good point. I think there's always, Oh my God. I saw a TikTok about this the other day. Like there's always that one friend that's always hitting you up. Like, Hey, what are we doing this weekend? Like, yeah. where are we going? Who are we hanging out with? You know, like there's always that one person that comes to you and you're kind of like always the, the maker yeah. of all the plans. The like, person, yeah. yeah. Um, and that is a really good point to like, still allow them to feel like your friend. I mean, it's obviously somebody that you care about is to invite them to those things that you already have planned. Like it's yeah. that kind of friendship rather than just intentionally making like, Hey, let's go to dinner for two hours. Exactly. Yeah, as you said, totally. that is a really, really great You're way good to at just it. not responding to not well, to like your friends. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, not to your friends. I'm saying it in a good way. Like 
like I always feel like oh my gosh I have to like plan the coffee date with them right now like I need to respond I saw their text they're gonna see on, I'm on social like that's so rude whatever and you're like Kennedy you don't have to respond now yeah. you don't have to say yes now I've never thought I'm like if you text me at 12 30 I don't have to respond for a day like if, <laughs> if we're talking in real life I need to respond but if if it's on text like it's not my duty just because they texted me to text right back and I've never I've never felt like rude if anyone did that to me I don't know it's just that's just how I am I feel like um but I on the same thing that we were talking about I think that the friends I've had in my life they're a friend for a reason so I love them because of you know aspects about them and I feel like my friends through my life have been pretty mature enough to understand like we're not in the place that we're going to be best friends like for this season but I I I think they know that I'll always have their back and yeah. like love them. So I feel like I don't need to have that sit down conversation. Like, Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm not having time for you right now. Like the vibe <laughs> isn't good. I feel like they just get it because yeah. they're smart and with it and they know me. And then that's sort of how it goes. Yeah. And there. people who know you like Ralph, whenever she's in that place, she's in that place. Like she's a hundred percent present in that moment. So like, if she's traveling, she's not going to be on her phone. She's going to be present yeah, with the like people that she's spending yeah. time with, which I love that about you. And I need more of that in my life. So then I feel like people who are like along for like with the along for the journey with you, get that about you that like, yeah. if we're long distance or like doing our own thing for a bit, it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah which I try to like, cause that's important to me. Cause I like to be like with the people I'm actually with at the moment, but mm -hmm. that's also what we were talking about. Like, if you are the one that responds all the time and people are going to go to you all the time. Yeah. That's right. Why, she's like, why does this girl always call me? I'm like, because I don't answer, but you answer on the first <laughs> thing, you yeah. know, which obviously that's amazing about you too, because it makes people feel like they know you and connected and that like people feel comfortable calling you or they might not feel as comfortable calling me, but <laughs> it's just interesting because you have to realize like what you're doing or I'm like, no one ever texts me. It's like, oh, cause I don't respond. You know, yeah. so you kind of, it goes both ways too. Like if you think people are reaching out to you too much, maybe you're the one like always giving it back. Right. Vice versa. Very, very interesting take. Kind of like what you're putting out is what you are attracting, which is something yeah. that I say all the time is kind of like your energy attracts other people. And I think also it just seems as though, well, even just chatting with you guys, I know that you have such a good, strong foundation of your friendship and what you're looking for in other friendships and like, I think that's just really inspiring. A lot of girls are trying to figure that out and you guys have kind of found it in each other. So, and I, I love seeing it. Like you can just tell <laughs> that y'all love each other like sisters. And that's the kind yeah. of friendship that everybody wants, you know, especially after high school, after college, you're moving to a new city, maybe like it is very hard to meet that person. And so y'all are very lucky that you have each other. Yeah, um, we are lucky. Yeah, we are. <laughs> And so that's kind of like our little segment on friendships. I really want to dive into daily drills. Now I have a lot of people that talk about, you know, their small businesses. I have a Facebook group where there's a whole community of girls with small businesses wow. that have connected cool. with each other. And it's just incredible to see. And I think being able to supply them with like y'all's advice would be super helpful and resourceful and doing my part and what I can, what I can bring to my platform. <laughs> We're open books. So yeah. Ask, ask us whatever. Anything. Okay. So my first question is what was the biggest challenge of, of starting a business? Like the finances, the design, the manufacturing, social media, like the contracts, any of it. The first hardest part that I remember is coming up with the name and like telling people because it was hard to come up with the yeah. name, like half the names were trademarked, the Instagrams weren't there, all of that fun stuff. But once we came up with the name, it became like real and then telling people about it. It's obviously easy to tell people something you're excited about, but also hard because like when you tell someone you told them and you kind of have to do it from there. Yeah. Yeah. You can't really <laughs> take it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big person about that. Like a lot of empty promises, especially in like the social media space, you say you're going to do something like, for example, I said, I'm going to do this like fun on weekdays with my sister, where I set her up with like my followers, brothers and stuff. I saw that. <laughs> well, my sister's been like dating around and now she has these guys she's interested in. I'm like, what the, what, what the heck, Aaron? Like you're supposed to be single. Like what? You're supposed to be single. <laughs> yeah. That's but it awesome. is like, you say something, you speak it into the universe and people hold you to that standard, which is really great because you're like, I can't let people down, but that can be very overwhelming too. I'm sure, especially like such as this starting a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many different challenging aspects. I feel like they all are like pretty minor in the grand scheme. We've been super lucky. Um, we both put in $10,000 to fund it. And then obviously the pie just got bigger, the more sales came in. So we've been able to totally, um, you know, maintain being self-funded, which is awesome. So I don't feel like, obviously 
neither of us have a finance background. So like that was definitely challenging, like learning cash flow, but like minor. It's not like we needed to go out and get a loan. Well, and we the reason we put in that amount is because that's the amount we could put in. And we thought like we can buy enough fabric to do one drop. And then if that all sells out, we did the math, like this is how much we'd make, then this is how much we could buy from our next drop. So obviously we could have done it with less. We could have done it with more. That's just what we had and what yeah. we felt like was reasonable for us to like risk on a learning experience if that's what we chalked it up to be and it yeah. went nowhere um because I feel like people are like why'd you put in that amount or why didn't you raise money or and we just kind of like honestly we didn't talk to anyone about it we just talked to each other and we're like I feel comfortable with this what about you okay let's go to the bank and let's open a bank account and yeah. transfer mm -hmm. money and we kind of just did it and yeah. I'm glad we just marched forward versus like asked a million people because you can go a million different routes we also could have put in all that money and like nobody bought our products. You just don't know until you know. Yeah. Another challenging aspect has been inventory planning. We work with an inventory planner who does all of data analytics mm -hmm. on our sizing breakdown and quantities to buy. But again, you don't know until you know. So we, we are constantly iterating and creating new SKUs and, um, you know, diving into new categories and we don't know. Like if you're doing a clothing brand, you don't realize that you have to make like a certain amount of extra small, a certain amount of small, a certain amount of medium, a certain amount of large, like and the it's, size it's really in six months down. So like we put yeah. in our PO now for end of summer, but we don't know, like, is, is our demo going to change? Like, is it yeah. going to be more, you know, medium, large, heavy or extra small, small, heavy? Like, yeah. are people excited by colors still? They were excited by it six months ago, but like, are they still excited by colors or did they want more of like that minimal, um, Euro, um, yeah. Yeah. Pantones. So we nor now we have like data to go off of and people that are professional and that help us that have worked in the industry. But obviously at the beginning we had no data, <laughs> no one to like dive into any research. No one got it besides us because we were doing it. So we really relied on like our instinct. We'd be like, I think this, do you think this? We'd talk it over and we would just go with what our gut was. And of course we would have leftover some size. We would have this color that wasn't as moving as well as the orange that you were talking about. So it's right. just interesting to see. And you, it's kind of trial and error, especially the first year we said yes to everything. We tried it all. We literally tried every color of the rainbow. We did things that were like extra small and extra small, small, medium, large. So like two sizes, we did things that were five size variants. So just literally trying everything, trying yeah. new styles, new colors, new days of the week to drop new times to drop. Like you don't know any of it till, you know, so now yeah. down the road, we can look back and like at the beginning, at the end of last year, we were like, okay, January, what worked, what didn't February, what worked, what didn't. Cause we don't remember like, was it cold in LA in March or was it hot? Right. Like was and it, we're like yeah. such a small little bubble in comparison to all of our customers. Yeah. So it's super interesting just to at the beginning, you just have to try and trust your gut. Like there's actually yeah. nothing else you can do. Yeah. I think it's, it's absolutely insane that there's so much work that goes into actually starting a brand that I don't think a lot of people understand. It's like, oh my gosh, well, you sold out. Like, when are you going to restock? And then they don't understand, you know, like that takes a lot of time. Number one to like yeah. manufacture it also to figure out like how much you're going to order of it, but then also to like get the money to be able to put it down. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's something I'm working through right now. Like I'm coming out with my merch, I think honestly, like this week, I, it might be tomorrow. I'm Amazing. literally driving. Yeah, I know. I'm driving to Dallas today to go pick it up. And that's something oh. that I realized, like I went to school for fashion. This is literally what I studied, which was like inventory planning. I did a whole senior project on it. Wow. wow. But when you get to the wow, thanks guys. We did not do that. We, we don't know anything Respect. about it. Respect. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask like what y'all's backgrounds were if you had like background yeah. in, in any of this. Uh, not oh. in this. I was a communications major, which okay. I definitely feel like translates in some ways. I think just from like a organizational perspective, like I took a lot of org comm classes and interpersonal relations. So I do feel like from like a leadership communication standpoint, I, I feel pretty good. And I took some PR classes, but um, we needed I, someone I like didn't want to do the math. <laughs> so I did not take business. <laughs> um, you have a, yours was like a little bit more businessy. I, I just love fashion my whole life, but I never did anything in it. Um, I did kind of business calm advertising. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I think is like, it, it's one thing to learn it in a classroom, but when you're applying what you've learned to your own business with your own money, your own risk, yeah. like that's a completely different story that 100%. you just really can't, you can't fathom what that risk feels like until you do it yourself. And obviously with every single risk, there is doubt. And there's like things in the back of your mind, like, holy shit, we would just put down 
you know, essentially $20,000 into this. What were some of those thoughts going through your mind? Like, what are we going to do if this doesn't work out? Did you have like a background or do, did you guys just have like so much faith? Like this is going to take off. I think we definitely had faith. It was going to work out. We I had faith. that I was going to make my money back. I didn't know what was going to happen <laughs> after that. Yeah. Like we had faith that we were going to sell the first drop. Yeah. We didn't make that, that many. And we thought we knew enough people that would buy all the things yeah. if worse came to worse. And we kind of risked our money in a sense that like, we agree that we can chalk this up as a learning experience and something that we will always look back on and remember in our next stepping stone, if that's what it's meant to be. I feel mm-hmm. like we both like believe in a higher power and like that some, there's a plan for our lives. And so it's kind of like easier in that sense to be like, okay, yeah. this would be part of our story. If worse comes worse, obviously we don't want it to just be a little part. We want it to be a big part, yeah. right? but at the end of the day, that's yeah. what we feel comfortable like we also didn't have time. We didn't have time to think about it. It was like, yeah. okay, we, so let's start. What's the name? What's the LLC? Okay, I'm reaching out to a lawyer. We have a third partner. Okay, so let's get our contract with her. All right, let's start the site. Okay, where are we going to shoot it? So it's like, there's so much like excitement happening that there wasn't really a lot of time to question. And both like my husband and Houston believed in us more than we believed in ourselves. Yeah, like, I was true. like, this might be really stupid, Justin. He's like, Kennedy, I, I would rather put my money in you than the stock market. I was like, wow. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so sweet yeah. though. And super important to surround yourself with people that like will 100% back you. Like you should be yeah. dating somebody yeah. that so is funny. your number one fan. 100%. I'm yeah, like, they were a number one fan. They really were. Like, I think they probably would have bought a sports ball if we wanted to. <laughs> I know. It was so sweet. It was literally like so sweet. They were just the most encouraging of yeah. us, I feel like. So true. And so- Anytime that we would start to feel maybe a little insecure, like questionable, I feel like both of them would very much be like, you guys are doing like what you're meant to be doing, like go Mm -hmm. after it. You're going to crush it. And so there wasn't like a lot of margin for us to like be in our heads about it. Yeah. Which is so, so nice. I think that's a huge part. Like people have these dreams and they want to start a business and then they get so caught up in the what ifs. And to your point, like the more time that you think about it, that you're not like actively working towards it, the more that you can like talk yourself out of it. I mean, I was definitely in that headspace when I was thinking about quitting my job and doing all of this. Like I constantly got so fixated on the what ifs, like how am I going to pay my rent? You know, all of those Mm -hmm. things. And ultimately at the end of the day, I had people around me that like were my cheerleaders that were telling me to do it and were supporting me. And the fact that y'all have each other too, I'm sure really, really helped. Like you have somebody that you're starting to be, a business with so you know at the end of the day at least you have one other person yeah that believes in what you're doing and so true that's that's such a great aspect of having a co-ownership is like two people that can rely on each other whereas you know maybe you have like a single business like you are your own person and for that reason it's even that much more important to have people around you um super curious so as you said you don't have like a background in a lot of these things you were just kind of learning trial and error. Was there any mistake that you made that you're like, we will never make this mistake again. And you learned from it. Like we have so many, we have so many, so many. Well, well, last summer we were making, um, something and we were starting it at a new factory. Cause it was a new fabric that we'd worked with. And I just feel like we didn't know, like, the like you were saying earlier the restock the how long it takes all of that like and then that factory ended up being terrible but then we had to launch the product and, and we the, prematurely launched and it. We, we launched prematur- it before we had it in our hands so we oversold because okay. they under delivered and then we couldn't work with that factory again because they were so the product ended up being fine that they delivered but yeah, they the were so terrible to work with that we didn't work with them again so we couldn't restock it and everyone wanted it and it sold out and like 20 minutes, but everyone wanted it, but we actually couldn't do it again because they wouldn't do it again. Um, So I feel like just like launching premature, going a little too quick, like when the momentum picks up, you obviously like want to go along with it, but also you have to give yourself like room and grace. And if something doesn't work, you can push it a week. Now we're so much more like, it's okay. We'll push it. We'll do whatever. But at the beginning we were like, it's only going to work if we do it tomorrow. Like we got to do it now. So, and I would say too, just like with the whole design manufacturing process, I feel like we've gotten a little bit better at visualizing what the final product is going to look like, because you don't often see the full garment until you get your photo sample. So right obviously work on the style, the fit, all of that. Then we'll like, and we'll work with the fabric and then we'll pick our panto and we'll see like little swatches. Well, your little like micro swatch looks way different when it's on an oversized. <laughs> we did not know that. It's literally like <laughs> a one back, inch by one inch. Literally be like, oh, it's neon. It's neon. We thought it was quickly. It's like, 
light and washed and it is neon it's like picking a gel color and then they paint it on your nails and you're like no 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 oh that's- my god yeah I know that way too well. And I'm not as vocal about like changing it (laughs) as I wish I would be. So I can't imagine like producing a garment, like hundreds of hundreds of pieces, maybe thousands of people's. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So is there anything that you would do differently? Had you like just completely started it all over? You think that everything is kind of a culmination of all of like the mistakes that you've made that you've learned from that have helped you guys grow as a business. I feel like I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't do anything different. I would, I would hire somebody sooner, quicker. Yeah. Okay. And move into an office quicker. Yeah. Like I, kind of trust ourselves more. Like at the beginning, we're like, will we be able to pay for an office? Will we be yeah, able we're to like, pay we for We sold someone? out this month, but what if next month everybody has their overseas crew neck and they don't want to buy from us anymore? <laughs> we like, yeah. we kind of like got in our heads after we already had some momentum. So like, kind of just like trust that go along with it, like make those decisions sooner rather than like we're drowning and have to stay at the office till midnight every night to pack on the weekend and then hire someone, you know? So kind of do all that a little quicker, like believe in yourself, like you're saying you do. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. And hiring someone else. Okay. I I struggle with this a lot because obviously like fun on weekdays is my like life. It's my world now. And I'm like so particular about everything that like, I just want to do it myself. Like I have an agency that supports me. And there's a lot of times that like, they can help me, but I just want to do it myself. And when yeah. so much of yourself is invested in like your business, how do you allow yourself to like hire someone and give them brain to actually do their job without being like, gosh, I just want to do yeah. it myself. You know, you ever have that? Oh, I don't think I would have hired someone this soon for sure. Like I'm very much like that. Ken is very much like that too. Like, I feel like you're more particular and like system yeah. oriented than me. Um, but you're really, really good at training someone to do exactly what you need. Like, I don't think of those eight steps to tell someone, I just kind of like, oh, I can do it. So they can do it. Or like, they'll just watch me and do it. But you like sat down with our first interns for like two weeks, taught them actually everything. And I'm like, they don't need to know all this. Like, what's the point of sitting down with them for two weeks that wastes two weeks. But like, then our summer last summer was so much more free to be able to do things that like we actually needed to do great yeah. vision, like plan for mm-hmm. black Friday and Christmas. Cause you have to do it that early. Right. And like, I feel like you should talk on it because you're so good at Aww, thanks, doing God. it. You are. I don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll ever feel great to give up control. I'm a control freak by nature. So, and I'm yeah. very much like, I can just do it myself. I know how I like it to be done. I don't want to have to interest somebody else to get it done to the same level that I want it to be executed at. Oh my gosh. But I do daily think, struggle. <laughs> yeah. It's hard, but I think a being really particular with who you hire, we both were like, we are not going to hire until we find the right person. We don't want to bandaid the issue. And so hiring for character over talent, I think was huge for us. Obviously, you know, any employee that we have is going to have be talented and like awesome and a super hard worker. And like, you know, But also like we want someone who has like strong character, strong conviction, strong work ethic, because that's all teachable. You know what I mean? Like all Mm. the like systems and processes, we're all growing. Like we're growing right now. We're learning too. We're becoming more efficient. Nothing's set in stone. So we don't need a technical expert. We need somebody who's going to sit down and like help us streamline our processes and make sure that our customers have the best experience and want to grow with us essentially. So I think too, just like reframing the hiring process and not putting so much pressure on like, what is their background and what is their resume and whatever, rather than like someone who's like, I'm here, I want to work, I want to learn, here is my background, maybe it applies, maybe it doesn't, but regardless, like I'm, I'm sold on your, on your vision and on your mission. And I want to be a part of executing that. Yeah. And I can fit in wherever you need me to fit in. I feel yeah. like Claire is our first hire and she's listening to this in the back room. I think <laughs> but like she was perfect for that. And I also think someone that like, we have a small office, we go to our house and work some, like someone that's, you feel comfortable enough around to have them yeah. in your daily life right. and hang out with for eight hours a day, I think is also important because you can teach all the stuff of how to pack a package, how to write a purchase order, how to do your product pipeline. You Mm -hmm. can't teach like personality and work ethic and morals. Right. I think that is such a huge freaking key. And that's like one thing that I say is a resume can only show so much. Yeah, it's true. Like, I mean, you have everything listed on a piece of paper, but that's not saying anything about like how you handle controversy, how you handle right. criticism or like how you take leadership. It doesn't really show that. Yeah. The only way that you can like learn that is by just interacting with people. Um, so I'm curious, how how did you find her? Did she just apply online or how did y'all determine? She was, 
she was a mutual friend of someone that Kennedy knew, which was helpful. Okay. I think having a mutual friend is helpful, but also we met her in person. And like, if you're listening to this and you're graduating from college or looking for a job, like she showed up in our freaking daily drills, bubble bra, like had uh, so much before, <laughs> styled it cute, like came with something printed out, was excited to be here, like super normal and talkative, but also like professional. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was important because a lot of people will come and they don't know what daily drills is, or they've never purchased from us, which is yeah, fine. Like my obviously. friend sent me this and they thought it might be a good fit. And I'm like, okay, well, if there you're a hundred with- girls yeah. who are like dying to work for us. So if you're right. not, like, I don't mean that in like a, uh, yeah. pretentious way but it's like make something special that stands yeah, out yeah stand out a like little she bit she literally had her bubble bra style in the cutest outfit we had ever seen that we wanted to wear so like in being a clothing line that's important to us um that you would care about the clothes as well so yeah. just something that makes you stand out and that's different like go the extra mile exactly. and then we sent her um a, t- a tiktok chat like not challenge a tiktok um, a project project and like a few questions answer things that we mm-hmm. thought the roles that she would fit in and she turned it in within 24 hours and it was well executed and like so just little things like that that you can make yourself how stand you do out. anything this is what she says how you do anything is how you do everything yeah. right claire yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh she is listening in the back room over there Claire, it's so true. <laughs> Claire, I'm a fan just based off of, oh, well, I guess you can't hear me because I'm in your headphones. She can't but hear you. Claire, let- they said they're a fan. Everyone's <laughs> a fan. <laughs> I love hearing that though, because I, there are so many girls that listen to my podcast that like are in college right now or they're at a stage in their life where they're trying to get hired at a different job. And that was truly like how I found my success was utilizing like my personality to, to yeah. land the job. I mean, Granted, yeah, like I had cool background, like I had some good skills, but for my job at TikTok, like it was not actually based on my resume at all. And I think that's a huge, huge key for anybody who's listening that is looking for a brand, you know, like if you can't think of one way that you can stand out for that brand and like how you can Mm -hmm. use your passion for that brand to like, you know, try to be a little bit different then like, maybe that's not the brand for you, you know, like exactly. Yeah, I agree. It's so true. And I feel like the skills will come. Like they always mm-hmm. do. Like if I think about like my skill set, like, yeah, sure. I did some marketing. Like I obviously get business, but like, I kind of consider myself a jack of all trades. And I used to think that as like a negative thing. Like, oh, I didn't choose my one straight and narrow path. Mm-hmm. But now I'm yeah. like, that works to my advantage. Because I'm like, Claire, she's going to start a business one day and she's going to be super successful because it wasn't like, okay, here's what's on my resume. Here's what I'm, you know, I'm only willing to do these three things because I really want to be specialized in operations or social media or whatever. She's like, no, I'm down. I just want to learn. I want to be a sponge and I work my, I want to work my ass off and I want to help elevate the brand. And like, that's going to get her to the next step. And I think the same thing for us yeah. too. Like we've done so many random things. Yeah. And we know what we're good at. And we know what we're not good at. And granted, mm-hmm. like we end up gravitating towards the things that we're good at, but yeah. I just, I don't, I think like kind of gone are the days where you had to figure out like one specific niche thing that you were going to be amazing at and you couldn't do anything else. And I feel like too, like we were just packing a few orders right before this and just like not thinking that you're above anything or below anything. Like Claire brings us coffee into the office. We bring her coffee into the office, you know, like Mm -hmm. both things that like should go both ways. Like someone's not underneath you. Your role isn't above someone else's like it's very that dynamic and you kind of know from meeting a person one or two times if like they get that or not yeah Um, I think that's so important to look for too yeah that's that's really great insight I actually heard something similar one time I think it might have been like employee training or something about oh you know what it was I took a I took a course in college about leadership it was literally like the easiest credit I ever took um I just (laughs) had to show up to this 45 minute lecture which was really freaking hard to do and um (laughs) we talked all about leadership and like how your manager just in, in the people above, like really, really instill like the level of, um, work ethic. And it's like, okay, if you're consistently telling your employees to like go clean the bathroom and and mop the floors, but you're not doing it, it's automatically making them feel like you're too good to do that task. But if you are like very humble in your work ethic and you're showing that like, look, we're all on the same level. We're all here to like succeed as a business. That's why people love work culture. And I I can tell, like I'm sitting here and I'm like, 
Dang it. I kind of, I kind of want to work for daily drugs. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I love it. And I think that's such good advice to anybody who has a small business and they're trying to hire people on and like also keep that foundation of like your core values and, and yeah. keeping it close to your heart. So I did have another, like kind of my last question around it is influencer marketing. You guys are freaking crushing it. Like doing so well. I see celebrities in your clothes. I see like huge influencers. I, how do you do it? Is it like through your personal network or kind of like, are you sending out emails, DMs? Would love to know about it. Um, I feel like at first it was kind of through our personal network. Like we have a bunch of friends, obviously living in LA that are in the influencer world and we've sent them stuff. A lot of them have businesses. They've sent us stuff. It kind of works like that. But then also we, we just like sit down when we're scrolling through Instagram, like, Oh, this girl looks cute. Like I literally saw your TikTok, and I was like, she looks cute. DM her. I think we did (laughs) last fall. So we just like DM anyone that like we personally like, we just DM them all day and night. And like half of them reply and say yes. And we just gift, like we gift anything and everything. We want our stuff to be worn, not sitting in our back room. So like anything we have, we want to gift to people that like are in the space, love fashion, want to share it. I feel like that's yes. been such a important thing, but literally everyone's like, Oh, how'd you get this person in it? Like we DM them, we ask them and they said, yeah. yes. Like if you never yeah. DM them or ask, they're never going to, they're, they're not going to reach that. out to you. Yeah. Rob yeah. is like the kind of person who's like, well, if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, might as well just ask the worst thing they can do is just not reply or say no. But like, yeah, we've been so surprised at the amount of people who've been like, yeah, I love your pieces. Here's my address. I'm like, you're really going to just give me your address. Like, that? like <laughs> I feel like it's harder to reach people though. Don't get as many brands asking them because they're not like influencers that are posting unboxings yeah. all the time, or people think they're too like hard to reach that they don't message them. So when yeah. they message so we're like the only people that are messaging them. So it's super interesting if you look at it from that yeah. aspect. Yeah, I, I, it's very interesting. And I just, I see so many girls in daily drills literally ever since like, I mean, I've known oh. about you, like I said, before we started this podcast from my roommate and you're from Austin. So like, yeah. I've heard about daily drills ever since oh. y'all started it. But to see how much y'all have grown in terms of like socials, I'll be scrolling and I'll see like one of my friends wearing it. I'm like, this is so cool to watch it kind of build before my eyes. And as somebody who like, I mean, y'all don't like pay me to, to promote it, but (laughs) that's the key is finding people that just believe in the business and want to promote it without any strings attached. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are a handful of businesses that I am constantly organically like, you know, supporting nonstop because you just believe in the message. And I think that is very key to kind of finding those people. And like you said, you just, you really never know unless unless you try and what's yeah. one no going to do, you know, eventually you'll exactly. get a yes. Yeah. And, and I, some people we send and, and like, they don't post until the sixth time we send them something, but like, mm-hmm. you know, okay. they like it yeah. when they post about it eventually. And that's all that matters. And yeah. I also think like what you're saying, we haven't paid influencers yet. Like, obviously we believe in influencer marketing and we do pay influencer stuff on our own. So we mm-hmm. definitely see the value in that. Um, but I think the like sending it to people, gifting things people want and not having any ties yeah, attached, no just makes attached. it like, if you don't want to post it, you don't, and you can wear it every day and never post it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we don't mind that because you're seeing people. And if you love it, you're going to probably tell your friends if you're not t- sharing it on socials. So I think like not making it like, if I send it to this person, they have to post like, yeah, if right. you make them post, they're not going to want to kind of yeah. like, we've seen I, that on our end. Yeah. Like, I was just about to say, me. yeah, to do a branded thing. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're not gonna like. And then I end up creating something that I think they're gonna like and not necessarily something I like. And then if someone just gifts me something and I'm like naturally out at lunch and I snap a picture, I'm like excited to post it, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge key that you just said is like, I think honestly, like I get way more excited when someone's like not asking you to post it. Do you know what I mean? Like they just sent it because they just like you as a creator. Like I think it's just as important for brands to like me and to support me and just want to do that without any strings attached. Just the same as like, I want to support other brands too, without any strings attached. And I think it's so interesting too, because you guys both do kind of creator stuff on your own, correct? Like you do your own paid socials. What kind of insight have you learned from that, from being on both ends? 
I feel like that's the huge thing that people are like, oh, y'all are so good at influencer marketing. You get it. And I'm like, because we see the other side, like I hate getting emails with a million deliverables that aren't like, I don't read the whole thing. Cause it's three paragraphs long. Like <laughs> I'd rather someone DM me. Like we literally DM like, hi, we'd love to send you something from our latest collection. Like we love your Instagram. Maybe say something that you like about them. Like, ha just watch the TikTok of you unboxing your Lululemon stuff and your boyfriend trying on the shorts. So funny. It's something that like you <laughs> yeah. remember from them. Yeah. And then like, we would love to send, send your best size and address and we'll get you a package over. Like yeah, that simple. easy and simple and straightforward. Like then as a creator, I'm like, okay, they don't want anything from me. They actually like me and follow me and know who I yeah. am. So mm-hmm. if you feel known, you obviously feel more comfortable. And then you send that to them and you get clothes that you like in the mail. And that's just kind of how it happens. I feel like it's so yeah. much like that's how Revolve has gone crazy because they just gift people clothes that they wear yeah. on a daily basis. Oh my gosh. You no. Know? Revolve is wild to me because there's like all these huge celebrities that are wearing Revolve and Revolve really does not spend that much money on like paid campaigns. At least yeah. at least from like my knowledge, I mean it's like a huge brand, right? You see everybody on your for you page, everybody on your Instagram page that's wearing it, all these influencers, but most of the time all of that stuff is just being like gifted and there's really no yeah. strings attached. It's just like if you want to post it then then go ahead and if not then like then then don't which is yeah. so interesting because like I said if I'm not required to post it I, I like am a little bit more inclined to you know yeah it's so weird and like obviously in the clothing industry it's easier to post or for someone to wear clothing than maybe like a product of some sort um yeah. like so that's how Revolve and us have an advantage because people like have to get dressed every morning mm-hmm. um but I think just ask and just send stuff and don't ask for too much in return as a mm-hmm. brand. That's great. I feel like we have so much good advice for anyone listening with, you know, small business, need a little inspo, some advice <laughs> from two girls that we are all going to, I feel like you guys are like my big sisters right now. Oh, you're <laughs> so great. sweet. If, if we can do it, anyone can do it. Like yeah. that's our message. Like it does sound nitty gritty. And there's like a lot of things you have to think of, but we didn't know any of this at the beginning. Yeah. And if Ken and I can do it, y'all can freaking do it for sure. Perfect. Well, I had like a little section of Q and A's that came from my followers, but a lot of them were actually answered just throughout the podcast. Um, one of the ones that was not, however, was, and then this is kind of be kind of like the end we'll wrap it up and get, get on with our week. But the first question is how do y'all anticipate trends and like get ahead of them in terms of like colors and silhouettes? We love it. We usually, one of us hates the color at first. Literally the Bottega green, I hated. Pink and red, Kim hated. But then like, it comes around, yeah. I feel like. But I think like we look to high fashion a lot. Or, like we we will like go shop Rodeo and just like window browse and like see what people are creating to get inspired. Even if it's so far from what we're creating, but like mm-hmm. you can start to see like the puff shoulders or like the deep Vs, the big collars. Like you'll just kind of start to pick up on different things. And then those influence are decisions when we go into fittings that's what I would say like it's all very organic it's not like we're like okay we're gonna create a you know this 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 and this obviously we'll do that with like different you know we want to create a silk or we want to create a button down but like with those kind of like experiential um encounters yeah. we more just like come to our fit meeting and be like oh like hey remember how they did like the boxer shorts like this like what if we like did our own spin on that And I feel Mm -hmm. like even in things that we're looking for too, like if I'm going to Zara for this one thing, or I'm going to shop for this one thing, then I should be making it or the thing that I'm bringing out of my closet the most, like, let's make something like this because I wear it all the time. And that's like what I'm naturally gravitating towards. And then also just like trends in general, I think people are like really dressing up things that are meant to be dressed down and vice Mm -hmm. versa. Like people are pairing like nice silk dresses with tennis shoes and people are pairing sweatpants with a nicer shoe. So I, I feel like the, that's kind of where we sit in the transitional, like Like they're wearing their PJs without to drinks, you know? So I've seen it a ton on TikTok too. Like one of um, the girls we started that channel with that we were talking about at the beginning wore literally like her bright colored PJs out in New York. And just like doing that sort of stuff, I feel like is a super big trend right now. And that's kind of where we're wanting daily drills to sit. Um, So, but it it will be crazy because sometimes we just have to go in it blind. Like we don't know everything before. We'll be like, yeah, let's hope this color does well. And then all of a sudden the colors everywhere. And we're like, 
thank god yeah, thank like god. Yeah. literally this was perfect because we have to decide so far in advance too and like fashion is moving at quicker speeds than ever and trends are too i mean you you know from tiktok it's like yeah one week this this trend is so cool but like what do they call it? Chuggy by the next yeah. week. Yeah. Like the next Shit. week. We're like, crap. So like timing is everything. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. I think about like all of the little like micro trends, like the gloves, like the yeah. glo- everybody's obsessed with gloves. And then one day somebody makes a video that goes viral and they're like, I actually think these are stupid. And then everyone's like, yeah. oh yeah, you're right. That's embarrassing. You know, like it does move yeah. super fast. So I'm sure, especially with planning in advance, you kind of just have to like take that risk and trust your gut. But I'm mm-hmm. sure, yeah. you know, it's definitely difficult because you can you can only anticipate so much. Yeah. Um, and in college, because I did go for fashion, we had like WGSN and women's wear daily. And we had some of those like trend forecasting websites. And what I've learned is that like, sometimes even those can't predict it, you know, yeah, like it, it's truly like the consumers kind of, yeah. you know, form it themselves. Um, so some of the other questions that I had that y'all kind of covered already were how you funded it and how much money you put into it, which you said it's 100% funded by yourselves. You both put in 10 K that is so commendable. Like seriously, the fact that y'all own hundred percent equity of your own business yeah. That's, that's huge. Um, another question that, that some people asked were your jobs before daily drills. And I, I believe you said that y'all were both doing like contract work. Yeah, yeah. more or less. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And then the last question, which I think is really great. Cause we haven't touched on much, but you did kind of say this during like the little friendship segment was, I would love to know about, um, like your faith and how it relates to your friendship and also your business. I feel like it's a big part like of our friendship and our lives, but not like super huge at Daily Drills. But obviously, like, I think the reason that Daily Drills has been successful and it's gone, we feel like we've had the wind towards our backs is because like, we know that Daily Drills is only like a company and Mm -hmm. selling clothes. Like we're not doing anything like curing cancer or doing world peace. Like we kind of know its place. And of course we love it. And of course we can dedicate like, a bunch of time and energy and effort to it but the end of the day it's a clothing line and we're people and friends and that's always something that comes before like relationships experiences those things so I feel like just knowing like the place that daily drills is and that it's not like the biggest thing in life and that everyone's going to care about it as much as us it kind of helps us like kind of navigate that and be able to like give it room to breathe and give it like we trust it and have faith because we have faith in like other things in our life. Yeah. I would say before daily drills, I honestly wasn't super happy. I was, so I was doing freelance work, but I was in house with a, with a company doing marketing for them. And I just remember like praying and being like, God, like, I want to love work. Like I always loved school growing up and I love putting everything into something and I'm very results driven. And so it's like, I really feel like I'm supposed to be loving what I'm doing, but I just don't know what the next thing is. Like if I went on LinkedIn tomorrow, I don't even know what I would type in as my keyword because like, I don't know what I'm excited by. Mm -hmm. I always knew I wanted to start my own business. I feel like I knew that from a young age, like that I would have influence, not necessarily like social media influence, but like influence over a team and people. But like, I thought it was going to be in 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like God, like literally handed this to us on a silver pot and was like, just walk Mm -hmm. through the doors. And like, I felt so much peace about it and like so much momentum and like wind at our back that I do feel like was from God. Like it was too easy not to be. Yeah. It it made too much sense. Like the way that things aligned, it was just incredible, honestly. And so I feel like just attributing that all back to God has taken the pressure off of us and the business. Like at the end of the day, like if it's from God, like God is going to nurture the business. Like he's going to have his hand of protection over it. So it releases me from being like, I have to make it succeed. I have to make sure that, and granted, like I have to play my part in it. Don't get me wrong. I have to show up. I have to work my butt off. Like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of growth for me in that too. But ultimately like the fact that I can surrender it and be like, it's from God, it takes the pressure off, off of us. And I think just even relationally, like having God in common, it's like at the end of the day, like we both can give each other grace because we've received grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's super important. And I think also for anybody who's like, maybe not even super religious, like myself, I wouldn't say I'm like a religious person, but I, everything that you just said, like all ties back to having faith in a higher power or having faith in yourself, having faith in the people you surround yourself with having grace, giving grace, all of it just ties back to you as a person. And when you are your best person, you can be the best co-owner, the best friend, the best spouse, 
you know, all of those things. And wow, this is, this is such an inspiring episode. I feel like I want to literally start a, start a business right now, like tomorrow. Yes. I'm so excited for you to pick up your stuff today. That's amazing. I know. You know what? I honestly forgot. I was just like so <laughs> invested in this, in this conversation for a minute. I forgot that I have to go drive for three hours. Um, I got it. Yeah. So put on a, put on a good podcast, a good playlist exactly. or something, and it'll fly by. Well, that is the end of all of the questions that I have for you. This was seriously so great. I cannot thank y'all enough. I just know the value that this episode is going to bring to so many girls that are kind of looking for that advice and looking for that sign to like take a leap of faith yeah. in themselves. And I think that y'all really, really provided that. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Mm -hmm. It means a lot. And also just so great to meet two people that I am also inspired by. So and sweet. Thank you so much for having us. This was so much fun. I'm not ready for it to end. I know. We so need to go to sweet. Austin. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Come to Austin for your next drop. I would yeah. exactly. love, love to hang out, love to get a glass of wine with you girls. <laughs> Let's um, do it. And who knows? So maybe, maybe y'all will. So if y'all want to follow up with daily drills or the girls, like you want to be besties, um, you want to like plug, plug yourself really quick. Yeah. Perfect. Um, daily drills is at daily drills on Instagram and shop daily drills.com. And then I'm at Mary Ralph and I'm at Kennedy Critchlow. Amazing. Well, you guys heard it here. That's how you can keep up to date with them and also be their friend and also support the business. And that is the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you next Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you.